For the best experience in the 420 special, we recommend you prepare all your cannabis items beforehand and enjoy the ride. Follow along with the prompts and join our trip. Please talk responsibly and within your limits. Welcome back to the Crazy Gaze podcast. Welcome back. It's sorry, the 420 special. I really sorry, guys. I really tried to be professional with it. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm excited for 420 because as we speak right now, is one of the is Stoner's national holiday across the world. So let's get ready to smoke. This is your first prompt, right? So you notice how I mentioned in the in the uh, intro that we want you to smoke with us. You don't have to, but but if you nice. are. Lighters up, lighters up for those at home that, that, that don't have video. If you if you're eating an edible, take it now. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're smoking whatever, smoke it now. We're smoking in tandem. All right, so Kayla, open up with your fun facts about whatever because it says your fun fact. Yeah, I have two fun facts. The first one, I've just been waiting forever since I learned it, and so I have to get it off my chest. It is non weed related, but the second one will be weed related. Mm. So the first one, in the 1830s, they were going through an abbreviation frenzy in Boston, right? So like, like how we do like BRB and like LOL, whatever. Mm. Like they were, they were just starting that, and so the young people of that era, what they would do is they would take common sayings, and they would purposefully spell them incorrectly and then turn it into an abbreviation. I need an example. So, the main example and the fun fact that I have for you today is there was a saying called all's correct, which is the same thing as saying like everything's fine. Mm. They took the spelling of that and they took the A from all's turned it into an O and then took the first C from correct and turned it into a K. Mm. And that's how we got OK. It was first printed in 1839 so, in the newspaper. So the word term OK means all's correct, which also mean all is good, all is correct, which is what it means naturally. So this word has that's what it make me feel like with LOL. Yeah. Like the first connotation of LOL and how it's going to be used for, like, official documents and, like, things like that, like, LOL will be added in just, like, it's so commonly used because now our kids' kids or their kids' kids' kids will be using that as, just because the whole world would have grown up in a TikTok era yeah, and internet era. That, that's, yeah, I, I fully believe that. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. And then the second fun fact, the weed-related mm. one, The first product bought and sold online was weed. From where? Give me a complicit Let us know. So, in 1971, a group of Stanford students completed the first e-commerce transaction, and the primary product was cannabis. The students that uh, supposedly bought the weed from other students at MIT. Mm. So it was, they were just kind of testing how e-commerce worked and the no governments, first, just wild west. Just, yep. This is the same thing as like how with Facebook, like it was just like a dating site within class and then it blew up. But like, yeah, the first thing to ever be bought online technically was weed. Because Marijuana. Because I'm a college student. And now we can buy weed from across the country and get it delivered to us. By mail. Yeah. I didn't... I like the BC... I like how we can order in in town now. And I know... Like, yeah, you know, it's much more convenient doing it now because when we were ordering it from BC, we had to, like, anticipate when we were going to be out of weed. Not when we're out of weed. If I'm sitting out of weed, I'm looking at it, and now I'm out, and I'll have to wait two days for it to deliver. And there's <laughs> some days... Canada Post is actually dog shit. Like, genuinely dog... I had to the point where... I hunted down like the the storing center because the problem that would happen is that they would have the parcel in like our area ready to go, but no drivers would pick it up because yeah. they would make it seem like the parcel was late. So there's no way to say like parcel live late, we'll yeah. deliver tomorrow. I'm like, no, the parcel been sitting there all day 
it said it arrived in, in, in whatever this morning. Where is it? At 8.30 a.m. Yeah. All day nobody came to give out, so I was actually got on the phone or, or got the contact of the, the one of the Canada's post managers at Well, because sometimes they would try and deliver it to your parents' house. That was one time. That was my mistake. I was <laughs> gonna get that. that was actually my mistake. I actually put, mm. the, I put the wrong postal code, so it shipped because it starts with a postal code, but that was a whole other thing. I just freaked out because it said my parents' home address yeah. and my parents' home thing. I'm like, oh, my God, did I fuck up? But it was just the postal code, which they fixed it. But my issue was that the drivers would never pick up the package when it's in the area. They would sit there. And just waited for the next day, and now we'd be out of weed for like three days, technically, because. Of, and he was sick of me, because yeah. like, I can assure you, it's on the next route. Like you don't have to be like, okay, well, I raised up with customer service, I raised up with this, I raised that. Like, you can imagine, as a stoner, when somebody is playing with your marijuana package, like <laughs> Karen doesn't even begin to describe like the type of shit that we go through, like or the type of shit that we present. Like I fucking. And because at that time we didn't have reliable like dealers in town either. Well, no. Like, they would constantly, they would say that they want to meet up with us, but then they'd be, like, four or five hours late if they'd even show up. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I've made a tweet about, like, how I'm so thankful of our new delivery system that yeah, I don't have to wait. Yeah, now we get prizes. I don't have to fucking wait for a shit drug deal. Like, there's, like, three things. Like, I made, a, I made a poll. Would you rather have a drug dealer that's late, that gives good shit... Mm-hmm. Or a drug dealer that um, his shit's all right, but he's always on time. Yeah. And I sat there and really thought about it. If the weed is good enough, I can wait. Yeah. It's just. But th- how long? Exactly. Because like some of them be taken the whole day. Not, the longest I think. Like there was one time when Stoop had texted her guy like in the morning. And it wasn't until, like, 10 p.m. that she said she got it. That's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> I think, I don't know if, like, dealers, like, have, like, a powwow, like, a, a dealer's committee where they just yeah. strive to be the least punctual individual. Or maybe they're in just any too type high. of No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't smoke. Some of them will be, like, straight as an arrow. There's just merchants that, like, you, of the merchant class or the merchant, you know, individuals, they are the least consistent. Yeah. I did have a fun one with my one big dealer. Um... So he actually lived in one of these apartments. I'm not going to go too deep into it because oh, of, yeah. But he lived in one of these apartments, and um, he was actually a friend from the restaurant I used to work at. But he used to work at that restaurant, but now he does his own thing. Yeah. So the weirdest transaction for marijuana is like, hey, I'll give you. I'm a little. I'm a little fucked up right now, like yeah. drunk. Like I'm a little fucked up right now, and I need to get backwards. I'll give you twenty dollars off your order if you can drive me there. So. <laughs> He gets me into his Mercedes, but it's an old Mercedes. Yeah. It's because again, he's a dealer, but he wants to feel nice. So yeah. it's like a 2003 Mercedes. He gets like he gets in. He's like, all right, let's just go pull the corner store. So we actually go to that corner store that we go all the way past over there. Um, we pick out the pack of backwards. And he comes back, and then he's I'm driving just because I'm in another person's car. I don't have a license. Oh, you were um, driving their car. This is the first time I'm hearing this. Oh shit! Never mind. I'm a- <laughs> I'll tell you about it. yeah. So, okay. So yeah. So <laughs> I'm driving his Mercedes. I'm driving back down this street. I'm driving by yeah. the way. And then he just like push the gas further. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, hear the engine purr. Like you're gonna push the gas further. I'm like, no. He's like, it's probably just... not even that good. So I just go, I just do a little. <laughs> and just, and just, I'm hitting at like 80, 80, 85 in this area because I'm not going past seven. Cause this is 60, 70 down that, down that, uh, it's 60, it's 60. So I'm doing just like 80, 85. And then we pulled back in and then we went back up into his apartment and he proceeds to try to roll a blunt while drunk. And I'm just sitting here like, Uh, can I just get my weed? Yeah. Like, can I guess, can I just, cause it could have just been, can I get my weed? Sure. Here. I'm going to go get my own backwards later. And like his own mind, but he was like, I'll get $20. It was $20 cheaper. But that was the outcome of, yeah. of me. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Sorry I didn't tell you. I, this is before you even moved in. Like, yeah, is, I know. Like, I was still working at the restaurant. Like, I was just, you know, doing Eno things. Like, you don't have to know every little bit of Eno's that's life out, out in the West here. Like, that's, that's just like when you sold weed in New York and you didn't tell me about why it. Why do you need to know, though? Because is I that, need to know what you're doing, when you're bro, doing it, and why you're doing it. Dog. <laughs> I'm low on cash. I like to smoke weed. It was literally just like, oh, yeah. like the perfect thing. And the thing is, since the program that I was doing, 
to give you like detail, I was doing it. Is it called international business major? Yeah. Meaning like they teach you how to do like it's a business course and like you do interns in New York. But the purpose is for you to be able to be more worldly. So like they teach you other like cultural like norms and all that stuff like for international business. Yeah. But the most of the t- students that are there are all like international students. students. Yeah. yeah. So there's people from France. There's people from you know Turkey. There was two Japanese girls. There was you know. Um, wherever, wherever. And then there's, uh, that Indian dude. Yeah. So, um, I was the primary, like, nobody knew how to, like, find a dealer in New York. All I did, I mean, this was pretty risky, but all I did was just find a dealer from Craigslist. I just looked up <laughs> things on Craigslist, found a phone number, and just met a cool dude that was just, yeah. you know, just on the ground. It worked out for you. But, but it could have been, it could have been bad. Because remember, I, on another podcast episode, like, I didn't want to go into it, but, like, when I got scammed. And, like, the guy yeah. put fake weed in my container. Like, that was from a Craigslist weed dealer in New York. Uh, but this guy was really genuine, like, you know, would hook me up. And then I proposed. I'm like, hey, like, you know, like, I got, I know people that like to walk around, like, my, my yeah. class. And, like, I became, like, the dealer for my class, basically. Yeah. So, like, everybody that You were the in-between. Because nobody wanted to, like, in their minds, like, how can I talk to a black person <laughs> to get weed in New York? Like, that, that, that was just, because. Th- Except remember, they were. Talking to yeah, black I was, person. Yeah, because to get into you. But no, I was sitting there like, you know, over selling them. I guess like $60 for a quarter. Yeah. As, like, it was good because most of them came from good families. Yeah. So they all have sitting here like little inheritors. Like they're sitting here balling up. and Yeah. So like they've got the money for it. I so remember, might I, as remember well. I got my feelings hurt a little bit. What do you mean? So I wasn't invited out to smoke, but I. Okay. So. Tall, foreign, rich. Okay. That's this guy's clique, right? Oh, the French guy? Yeah, you remember yeah. him. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And you see his Instagram pictures. He's literally like a uh, uh, like big <laughs> lip, head hair up, tall dude, right? And he had this other dude that would speak French. He wasn't as cool, yeah. but since there's the two French guys, like two guys from France, like they kind of like, the girls were interested in them because, yeah. again, tall, rich, French. And French is so romantic. Right? So, um,. They heard that I was, I was dealing, right? And so yeah. that he's, he basically, like, you know, never talked to me at all. But it's the only time he's talking to me is because about this. So, he's like, yeah. we connect on the marijuana. And so he's like, oh, why don't you bring this out? I'll buy you some stuff and we can smoke. Or, like, I'll buy you some, some of your smoke yeah. and you can come down, right? So I go all the way and, like, I dressed up kind of, like, you know, nice and, you know. For, like, a hangout. I'm, I dress up for a hangout. Yeah. And so then, like, uh, <laughs> I think his English wasn't as clear. So when I got oh. there, he's like, all right, thanks. And then I was just like... So you mm-hmm. thought you were invited, but he meant to not invite you. He just wanted you to bring weed for yeah. his hangout. Yeah. So Aww. I'm sitting here like, oh, okay, well. Poor Vino. Ah, no, 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 poor Vino, <laughs> me. I still made my money. I still, you know, at the end of the day, I smoke by myself at home. I'm not worried. I'll just yeah. go home and smoke and play League on my beautiful Mac computer yeah. and maybe FaceTime you on the side. But yeah, that was that yeah. deal situation but yeah dealing everyone like and to round out to that original point that kayla made she didn't know i was selling weed yeah. in you know that area because but then when we were together in lu when we were dating we sold for a, a smidgen of time just a little bit of time literally three days and like i only helped you like once or twice because one of my cheer girls yeah you felt like such a like uh what is it it was uh, my first drug deal i was very nervous what, what's it, what, is it, what is it like a, not like a hood but like um a trap princess yeah she like sorry my, my man's gonna go get the hookup and it seemed like wow like for 15 dollars like we usually get like this i'm like bro <laughs> yeah a little pack and i remember pack. i took the little bag and i like put it in the the band of my shorts that i was wearing <clears throat> and I like I walked up to them because it was they were meeting me in the hallway. Yeah. I don't know why we weren't doing it in one of our dorm rooms. She was meeting me in the hallway, and I remember like like grabbing it and like hiding it right because it's so illegal. <laughs> and I, would, I made sure that nobody saw it, and then I took the cash like so casually. <laughs> Bro, like selling for that in that short period of time, and I got yip too. I'll tell that at the end of it. But yeah, yeah this. What happened? How did we sell? How did we? We. <laughs> so we knew this guy named Dealer James. Mm. And he was going away for. Like, he was going back home for a while. Mm-hmm. But he needed somebody to look after his, his stash yep. while he was gone. Mm-hmm. And so then, like, I don't know how it really worked because you 
You were the one that did it. I just I, helped with that one time. No, like, but, literally, so he... Like, people be, would text you or No, whatever. no, I was sitting there hanging out, like, one time smoking, right? I would... And the thing is, like, I was not, like, a fiend or anything like that, but yeah. I would buy weed for myself to take home. And then he would just be like, hey, do you want to smoke? Like, yeah. he enjoyed the... He didn't really have many friends. Exactly. He was <laughs> just a dealer. He was that dealer, and I know my fellow weed smokers back in the day... Because the mm-hmm. thing is, he had asthma... And not like, mm. tee hee, I have asthma. Like, he would smoke and inhale one time and be, like, coughing up, like, so Yellow much phlegm. phlegm. Yellow phlegm. He had a paper towel to every toe. Yeah. He coughs in. He's like, yeah, that's a good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so it was so disgusting smoking with him. But because he was the plug and he didn't have friends, we would smoke with him because he wouldn't charge us. Yep. <laughs> I'm sitting here, like. Hey man, if you're gonna give me free weed, I'll listen to you talk about your dumb thesis about anything. I'll... And like his roommates were cool, mm-hmm. so we were mostly there for his roommates, and it was just like he tagged along. Yeah. Also, this is your second cue to spark up. Oh, if yeah. you I don't have another piece of paraphernalia, it's time to spark up again. Here's your another cue. Lighter flicks in the chat. <laughs> Have your second flick. As we move on to the next segment, which is I'm glad you opened it up with James. We're gonna finish off with James, but we'll go into yeah. the segment of people we like to smoke with and oh, didn't like true, to smoke true. with. But so, yeah, how I started dealing for a, it was just one, like, high session. Like, we were listening to, to Bob Marley. Or not even Bob Marley. We were listening to Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. He's like, God, look at this guitar. Look, look, yeah. look, look at this thing. Look, look what he does right there. And, like, that's what we would be, <laughs> and we'd all be smoking together. He's like, do you want to help me out with something? And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, whatever you are, yeah, just give me more weed, though. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever you're saying, I'm not even listening because I'm sitting there smoking, right? He's like, uh, I need somebody that will be watching my stuff while I've gone and I trust you like I like yeah. I trust you myself so I mean if you I can give you like <clears throat> all this stuff and the weight uh could you push it for me and I was like okay cool like whatever yeah. like as long as I can smoke I, 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 I can smoke the stuff the yeah. stuff like I'll be chilling like yeah just don't smoke too much of it because I'll wait I'm like okay whatever yeah. but so yeah he gives me the room key to his room yeah. that's when I was like I was laughing it off but then he's like all right here you go and he gives me his room key, and the next day he's gone because he's going home for the thing. Yeah. So now I'm in the room. I have about two pounds of weed, a key, and no supervision. <laughs> so I knew, like, I'm not going to sell all of it. Yeah. Uh, even you, I was going to say a bulk of it. But I'm going to sell a little bit of it and take a little bit off of it and then just, you know, make up a scenario, right? Uh, because he said I could sell in bulk. So I wasn't going to mention the small sales that I'll make. I'll keep things short sales. So I'll only make 10, 20, 10, 20, 10, 20. And I'll just say, oh, this guy bought 110 and he spent, like, he bought, like, this many grams. So, like, the yeah. grams missing added up to, like, the bulk sales that I'll be putting together for that situation. But, yeah, he just made a blast text message and said, all orders go to this guy and Sean will hook you up. Yeah. And so that was how it was happening. And I felt, you know, I could pretty do this shit, like, pretty well because... I was prepackaging orders. I was prepackaging tens, prepackaging twenty dollars, prepackaging thirty. And so if somebody's like, "Hey, can I get a quick 50? I just open it up. Okay, put twenty in this and this. So now it's a full fifty bag because now the I'll only do yeah. clean cut sales. Like I'm not doing any orders. Like because it'll be twenty, thirty, and forty dollars worth the order per time. So that's what the the scheme was. And I only got yipped one time. Yeah. Only got yipped one time, and I should have counted before I left. I I know. All the, the trap players and all the motherfuckers that have been doing this before be like, that's a, the rookie mistake. Count the money before you even touch, even move out of your pocket, count the money. Yeah. Because that's literally what happened to me. Because so the guys, they roll up and go, hey, we're thinking, like, yo, and here's me, you know, trying to be cool with it. And they slap cash in my hand and they pull up the weed and they move out. Like, yeah. and the guys were aggressive. And his, I remember his fingers being like, like, uh, and like a, like spider long. Like, his fingernails were just like weirdly. Was it that, um, that black guy that all of you guys were afraid of? That's a different story. I, I'm oh, okay, about it okay. But then, um, so he, he grabs it, and I, it was supposed to be $80 for nine grams, yeah. or eight grams. And he only gave me $60. Oh. So I'm sitting here, like, texting the guy, like, hey, you only gave me 60 It was the other 80 Not responding. Not responding. And then it was only until, like, 15, 20 minutes after, I'm, like, calling, calling, like, hey, what's the complaint? Like, oh. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I got you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, then Kayla helped me out with a couple of sales. I told Kayla how I was doing my thing and like how I have access to weed. And so And I was still very new to weed. 
That was, <laughs> that was very early on in my weed adventures. But yeah, she would pass it out to the, the cheerleading people. But uh, Caleb then mentioned another customer that we had. And so this guy, we'll call him Pablo because fuck him. Yeah. Dog. This guy, we would have smoke sessions. He was from our Nigerian crew. And he was tall. Not that tall. but Yeah, he wasn't like huge. But like. Like maybe six foot. He definitely had an under. intimidating presence that we all recognize. And I don't know. I was still doing some growing. I'm young. He's an older Nigerian guy. I didn't recognize it. I wasn't intimidated. Yeah, because he wasn't doing like weird shit to you. Like he just say hello lady and all that stuff. Yeah. But so he heard. Like this had been like a couple weeks after we had already met him. So he had heard about me selling. So he was like, hey, Sean. Could you. I'll give me 30 and I'll e-transfer you. When my 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 uh my Western Union lands, yeah, I'll e-transfer you thirty, and I'm sitting here like, okay, well he's gonna e-transfer me thirty dollars, he's gonna e-transfer me thirty dollars, <laughs> so he says he's gonna do it, so yeah. he'll do it. Okay. I wait a day. I'd already given him the weed, he'd smoked it, he'd done it, or whatever. I wait a day, I come back, text him the next day, like, hey, so it, it didn't you didn't message me yesterday about the thirty dollars, but like, oh, it's about thirty dollars, he's like, oh, I'll get it to you. Never does it. Never. And so, like, I would see him in person. Yeah. And I, I would try to bring it up, but then he would just do, like, a little smack on the back of my yeah. arm. Just like, I'll get it to you. Don't you worry. But it was, he was holding my shoulder firm <laughs> and shaking it and then, like, letting go. I'm sitting there just like, okay, well, <laughs> do I throw up on it or just let it go? I just had to take my lumps because, again, I'm not tall at a time. I'm... That's why I was still in my kind of like my. I was doing wrestling. Like, I was yeah, doing but my, he was a big guy. Yeah, so he he really was a big guy. So I lost about my thirty dollars on that, and to this day, I still see that. And not to get too much tea, not to give it too much tea, but I did notice that he's in a similar industry that I'm in. Oh. And has certain pe- mutual people that I knew because his name popped up on Facebook on me. I'm like, you know, I look at his profile picture, and this nigga, it's him <gasps> with dreads. And he's out here doing like like the solo album fiction and stuff like that. I'm seeing it like That's so funny. So that's that. But now let's move on moving on to people that you liked smoking with. Now, who is it that you comes to mind when you is it like they were fun to smoke with? Don't say me because <laughs> I was gonna say you're my favorite person to no, smoke with. No, but like <laughs> outside of me, because they already you that's why you're here now, but Who's your favorite person to smoke with? I don't know. I really enjoyed smoking with all the guys in university. Mm-hmm. You can say it, all the Nigerian guys. like. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, because there was one guy who was not Nigerian, and he wasn't fun to smoke with. <laughs> He's also the one I dated, but, mm-hmm. like, it's fine. No, yeah. Like, we, we would have, like, a... The, the thing I remember was the... And I the the only way I can describe it is that we would echo each other's laughter. Like yeah. one person would do something stupid, and then two niggas would laugh. You know what and, I remember vividly mm-mm. still? Don't talk about the hill. Don't talk about the hill, <laughs> Kayla. Don't talk about the fucking hill, man. Don't talk about the fucking hill. They don't need. Uh, okay, so when we were in university, it's cold as fuck up there, by the way. Our our school was smart enough that they knew. People are going to smoke and do drugs. Like, you can't stop it. So what they had was an unofficial smoking area. And right in front of one of the residences, there was a hill. Like, it was covered with trees and whatever, but there was, like, a little trail that you would go up the hill. The Great And then somebody had made, like, the most rudimentary smoke shack. Tarp on top. It, it had, like, a picnic table in the middle with benches, and, like, that's about it. But we went to school in the north, and, like, very, very much in the north. So 80% of our school year was in snow. Like Vikings! <laughs> mm. And with snow comes ice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um. you have all of these Nigerians who, like, just came to Canada for school. Like, they did not live in Canada prior. <laughs> and, and you know, <laughs> and the, just watching them try to go down this hill after smoking, they would, they were like, 
baby penguins. Weird. They would like waddle a little bit. And then when one of them falling, like, and they were like holding on to each other. <laughs> and then every once in a while, the first one would fall. Mm. And then everyone else would fall. And then they would so I think, I think the most beautiful part of that whole thing is just like the orchestra, almost orchestral, like, uh, yeah. put, like rhythm. Of all the niggas sucking their teeth as if I'm just, mm, 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 mm. Like, I'm getting up, sucking their teeth, walking around sucking, like just dealing with like the mediocrity of slipping yeah. and falling, sucking your teeth, like it was stuff like that. Good times. But yeah, that was. So that's your favorite person to smoke with. Yeah. One of my favorite people to smoke with was uh, I think you might have heard the legend. Have you heard the legend from this is from LU from okay. our school? Have you heard the legend of the tiger chest tattoo guy? The, uh, oh, I remember you saying something about him, but I don't remember him. So there's this dude, and he's like, he's pretty tall, um, but he has this iconic, and he's also see him at parties. Yeah. You see him around the hallway. He's the giant orange tiger chest tattoo guy. Yeah. That's his brand, right? So. I've never seen it. I, you've never seen it? No. It's huge. It's literally like... Like, I'm, I'm a, telling you, you've told me about him, but for all I know, he's an imaginary friend that you made up I can show a picture. Like, I saw, I've I, never seen the him The reason before. why I'm bringing him about right now is because I saw him on my face not so long ago still okay. doing his thing. So I was like, oh, shit, I remember that, dude. And, I, and this is one of those things where it's like, memory is literally a bitch. Like, I can't even pinpoint how this happened, but all I remember is it happening. Mm. I was somehow ended up in his room. Oh, and he romantic. lived. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> that, like he was. He lived in. No, he was, like I said, he was in one of the nicer rooms. Yeah. He lived in East. Okay. So everything is like gray and silver and futuristic. Yeah. He has his own room, blue linen on the bed, his own yeah. windows, his view to see like the water. And so I ended up sitting beside him, and so he was uh, offering me some weed. Like yeah. I don't know why. I don't even know why I was there, but. Uh, the thing that I remember distinctly is that he had uh, a smoking apparatus, right? And this smoking apparatus that you see right here, like, I know people on the video can see it, but people at home, think of, like, a mini mug. Yeah. And then a tube to go down it to smoke it, right? Yeah, it's this... like a glass bucket with a really long... Yeah, so most bo mo most pieces are usually fa <laughs> fairly shallow because you only smoke a, few, a small bit amount. Yeah. This guy would fill the entire bucket with weed. And he'd just be sitting there like, push it down. Push it down. And, get, and fill it thick. F put it on top and just do like. And it, I swear to, to this date, it is the longest bong hit I've ever witnessed. And he still didn't like cough. And that's the thing. I just sat here just kind of like. How do you do that? And then he let me use his bong, and I just give little, <laughs> like my amount compared to him. He would put it stuff, put it back, stuff it back down. Like he would yeah. repack it and pack it down, and it took him like a 30, 45 second bong toke of just thick, just cloud into this. And I think it was, he had a big lung like, capacity. That was yeah. like his thing. But um, yeah, I got to smoke with the, the tiger tattoo guy, and I think that made it so cool is that he was nice. He didn't have any, like, weird, like, it was just a perfect smoke session. I was talking about my life back. I was talking about guitar and my passion. He was talking about his passion. Yeah. He pulled up on his phone his BMX video that he took that he was sick. Like, mm. it was just, like, a standard interaction. An hour, hour and a half. He's like, all right, bro. I'm going to see, see you. you. And we smoked together. Yeah. That's university. You'd find so many random encounters like that, you know. Uh, but there was, like, a bad encounter. I don't want to take over with stories, but, yeah. you know. I'll tell my bad encounter if you have a, any bad encounters for you. First, I want to say, I think my dream person to smoke with would be Stoop. Stoop? Yeah. Come stay close to her. T tell us she's right here. I really want to smoke with Stoop. She's one of my wives. I have many wives. We'll get into that another day. Um, <laughs> Part of me. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I don't, that's just my dream person to smoke with. Your dream person to smoke with? Yeah. My dream person to smoke with... I mean, other than Snoop Dogg. Uh, Snoop Dogg. Oh, yeah, obviously, the that's iconic. Yeah, the, but the like, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Um, but now I don't want to forget this thought, but I know you remember this, but I got caught red-handed, and I just, I ruined a, I didn't ruin a friendship, <gasps> but it, I was, I made myself weird in the friendship. Like, okay. I, I, I overtook a boundary. Um, I overstepped a boundary, and I lost a friend because of it. Mm. So... 
You remember what did you remember the the nigga Botswana? Yeah. You remember of him? Yeah. So he was another person that you smoke with, and I think like a lot of these stories just kind of gravitate around that one fact of just like we smoke together, we're automatically friends because yeah. even though it was pretty common, there's definitely people that oh I don't smoke like I'm here to, like I'm here to learn I'm gonna, and then there's people that are like hey like I'm I'm a smoker and you'd yeah. be coming from different cultures, different backgrounds, different whatever. So I ended up smoking with him and having a couple smoke sessions with him, right? And I think I had just broken my bong. Oh. I had just broken the bong. And this is a bong that I don't leave, usually leave campus. Yeah. But for this, I had left campus to go to the weed shop and everything like that. We yeah. had made a trip with me and my the, the mandem. And we had our own bongs and our own smoking things. Like, it was great. So we would be have to fuck around. Yeah. And I just broken my bong that I oh. bought. I didn't just buy it, but I, I bought it pretty recently. Yeah. And I broke it. So I wasn't necessarily borrowing bongs, but I would have smoke sessions with people specifically to use their bongs, but I'll just bring yeah. my own weed, right? Yeah. So uh, I would just be like, hey, like, you want to have a smoke session? I'm, like, I'm buying, and then they would already have like, their own weed, but I'll let them, hey, try some of this. It's yeah. a, you know, Gorilla Glue, whatever. And so we'd have that inter- interaction. So the Botswana dude, I finally, like, I had, not finally, but like, I had a smoke session with him, so I knew where he lived. Yeah. So <laughs> that sounds crazy. that is important. It's important. <laughs> I, I know knew, where you live. I know where he lives. Okay. I know where his his dorm is, right? So I so this is like two days, three days after the fact that I first met him. Yeah. My bong breaks, right? Yeah. So now I'm sitting here feeling like oh, I wanna smoke. I don't have anything to smoke out of, I have no paper, no this, no that. I just broke my bong. Let me start pulling like contacts, right? For people, hey, do you want to smoke session? Everybody's in class. For this this one day. Everybody was in class. Everyone yeah. was busy. Everyone, there's not one person that's available. Not one person that's free. And nobody's answering their phone. And I'm already, like, went, like, to go get a snack somewhere else. But I was in his building area. I remember, like, oh, there's this uh, Botswana dude. Like, I could probably just knock on his door and he's going to be there. Yeah. I knock on his door. Nobody's there. But I turn the door. Oh, no. And it's unlocked. And I'm just, like, okay, well... Just one hit wouldn't hurt. Just one hit wouldn't hurt. It's very bad. It's very bad. God, yeah. forewarning, it's this is going to make y'all cringe. Entering. Just know I was young, dumb, and desperate at the time. And I'm, I've and never... And would d- still probably do the same thing now. Hey, no, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> but so I open the door and nobody's home. So um, I walk in. Yeah. And I already know where his bong is because... You've been there before. I've been there before. We uh-huh. smoked before. And so I go grab his bong. I have my weed and my <laughs> grinder. And I grind it up and I sit. I make myself at home to let's say yeah. it. But I wasn't going to be there permanent. I was really, like in my mind, I was like, you take one toke and go, tell me how. Right as a mid toke, he comes home. And all you can say is, what the fuck? And he's like, yeah. And there's nothing that we can explain. There was no violence. There's nothing like that. Like, he was definitely cool about it, but he never talked to me again after that. Well, yeah. Like that interaction was weird. I was, I finished the talk like, hey, uh, it, just, it would be weird. The door is open. I was waiting for you, Brody. Like I was just trying to play it off, like you know, like we're we're brothers. Like yeah. no, like yeah, man, get out. And like yeah. he grabbed my bung and he's like, yeah, I'll I'll talk to you later, man. And then, like, I'll, yeah. but like he was very uncomfortable by it. Like I, because it's weird. I did. I know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, therefore, what I fucked up. So that was what I need to get that off my chest. But yeah, it's never talk to me again. Never talk to me again. Huh. Oh, but so we mentioned people we like to smoke with. Um, I just want to make sure I get all of that out. So, so smoking with me. Uh, <laughs> spoke. I'm not gonna give out his name to protect him, but smoking with this one individual. You know him. Yeah. Um. It's if someone you the, don't like smoking with. I absolutely don't like smoking with because uh, he made it seem like he's been with the mandem. He could chill with the bumba, but he could not yeah. chill with the bumba at all. You know, he was definitely like, so let's fast forward. Let's, let me tell the quick story. So we get in. I'm coming home from university. I'm Mr. Eno Marley right now. Like yeah. I, the, I'm the weed guy. Everyone knows me as the weed guy. Like that's my big personality. I'm coming straight from LU. Like, all that, right? So, I had met up with homie, and he 
went on his own university thing, did his own thing, and I'm coming yeah. back. And he was telling his escapade, like, oh, yeah, I used to smoke all the time. I used to, yeah, smoke. <laughs> I used oh, to for, always, 24-7. All the time I used to smoke. Was, every time there was a party and there's weed coming around, know that I'm smoking it. I'm like, yeah. okay, okay, you smoke. <laughs> so I I pick, I had the car, right? I already made my own pickup. I already picked up weed for myself. And so I'm in the neighborhood. And so, like, we want to connect because we used to be friends at some point. So we yeah. want to reconnect, right? So now that I, he's like, oh, but you smoke weed? Bro, I smoke weed. So that's when he did this whole speech. Okay, yeah. let's meet up and smoke. So I pull up, we, he gets in, and we go back to a spot where we can smoke because we're still, like, teenagers, essentially, so we can't just, like, smoke at the house. So we smoke outside the car, but we park the car, but we're smoking outside the car, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, with one door open, but we're in a parking lot. Okay. I have my bong. I take my head. I sprinkle it in. Do, like, do, do, do a little dance. Blow it out. Like, whew, that was good. You try something. You're really going to like this. Like, this is actually a pretty good like, yeah. thing. And so it makes kind of, like, explaining, like, yeah, that kind of, like, his indica, and then... I see him kind of like fumbling with like the weed and like. Which is fair because he could be only a joint smoker. That's usually the go to at parties, joint right? Are an apparatus. Yeah. It is interesting, right? But then, so yeah, so I watch him smoke it and I just see him. For those of you who smoke bongs, there is a technique to smoking bongs, pre disclosure. You first, you, sh- you pull, you, you, uh, suck slow. Uh, this is gonna be hard. <laughs> this is. First, you suck slow so that you can just burn the weed and get a cloud. Yeah. And then when all the weed is burned, you make an airway and release, and then you suck really quickly. So your first, you're breathing low, and then you suck really quickly. Yeah. It's a motion, a process. This nigga just lights it, just... <laughs> just sucks. He had to have gotten bong water on his mouth. I'm just sitting here just watching this guy just inhale for, like, burn, like, and get a little bit of smoke. I'm not done. I'm not done. (laughs) Proceeds to cough for, like, a minute and a half to, like, like, (laughs) like, choking. And he throws up on the side. Like, he throws up on the side. From coughing so much. On one hit. And I'm just sitting here, and I'm just sitting like... Yeah. Let's play. You know that song, Planes? Can you play that song, Planes, by, uh, I forget that rapper. Him going through the city. And I'm just watching He's this nigga. He's just trying to, like, play it off as if nothing happened. And I'm sitting here looking at like, bro, there's a white stain on your shirt a little bit from your baby throw up that you just did. The vomit on the side of the, the like, the That's ground. That's wild. You wasted the weed, essentially. Because you, yeah. you got a little bit of smoke. But not that much. <laughs> and so yeah, and that's like I'm in my mind. I love him. It, I'm not, well, I don't, but like yeah. in my mind, I'm seeing it like we are never smoking, smoking ever again. Yeah, ever like that. That's the only thing I could think of when I just see him just like just like <laughs> like choking on for dear life off of a t- half baked toke, like a toke that he. <laughs> it was all bad. So. We mentioned smoking with Tiger Tattoo, making smoking with my, you know, who you made him smoking with me. Let's fast forward to recently. Shout out to the Divine Dork, Divinity, oh, and yes. bring us to the Vegas trip. But why don't you tell me about that bubblegum weed? Oh, yeah. We got to try California weed. All right. Also, this is another cue to spark up. We're sparking up third time. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'll be honest with you. I'm absolutely fried right now. I'm, yeah. Absolutely. No, I'm good. I'm chilling. Spark it, Sparky. Anyway. Anyways, so we got to uh, try out some California weed because um, obviously it's illegal for us as Canadians to bring weed down across the border. But um, U.S. laws, blah, 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 whatever. Mm, jurisdiction. They were opinion. able to legally bring California weed to Vegas. Mm-hmm. So they brought some because they know... That Eno cannot be without weed for more than 24 hours well, or niggas, else he will go crazy. So wait, we wait, had wait. to be prepared. <laughs> Why did it seem like I was me? Like, you liked the weed too, but like, I could have lasted. What am I in Mexico? Yeah. You had a terrible time. I was at a good You time. were so angry like half the time we were there. Okay, go on, continue. So, yeah, I need to. Run. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, so they brought some California weed. And I was able to try what I deem the best weed I've had ever. 
not necessarily like because it gets me higher than everything else, but it literally tastes like bubble gum. It didn't taste like weed. I can it, attest. There was no weed taste to it. No, like it didn't even really smell like weed. Like it was like chewing on bubble gum. Yep. Every toke. And so like I'll be looking with Nikki because we remember we were on the side of their hotel waiting for her door. She had a blunt bowl of it, right? Yeah. And so we're sitting there passing it back and forth. And every time the and I would literally feel like I'm chewing on a hubba bubba pink bubble gum. Like yeah. there was no tar taste. There was no like we it did not taste like any remnants of like I'm smoking weed. Like it didn't even have a skunk taste. It literally tasted like bubble gum. So. And I've never been able to find it since. Yeah, we just have to reconnect with her and just be like, hey, not just only to talk to you because of weed, but like I know she's like, she's doing her own thing, but the same. We have like, to go to California. <laughs> and just just be like, hey, well, I can't afford weed, but like. Um, that's another thing. Like, I think I already told, like, the drug dealer dealer story from the Vegas guy. Like, oh, yeah. Late. So, because when we were in Vegas, we got there a couple days before, um... Did we? Yeah. Because it was us first. Oh, yeah. And then we, and the we were time. there for, yeah. like, one night by ourselves. And then Solomon, uh, came the next day. And then I think Dork and everybody else came the day after that. that. They came like maybe a day after or two days after that because yeah. I remember we were all like, we had already been like acclimated with the area, like we had to walk around a little bit and then we were waiting for them like. Yeah. And because our first like real day there, um, we had got off the airplane, everything like we, there was a whole fiasco checking into our hotel room. Um, but then once we got our bags and everything in there, Eno's like, on it already to find a dispensary and he on the maps it said there was one just like a couple blocks away so we had walked there and we were walking all around and Eno was getting irritated i was getting irritated because we hadn't eaten it was hot we were sweaty we didn't know what we were doing yep yep and then turns out it was closed down not even closed down it dead is not there anymore it's an old map posting and so i even asked the security guys oh yeah that's not been here for for a while because we were walking just back and forth on the strip. So we actually have to take a bus. But conveniently, that one weed place, I forget what it's called, but it's like like Weed World. Because they had their own shuttle service. Oh, yeah. To the dispensary. No, it was like Planet something or other. I found, I still have the tickets. Because oh. remember, we had to like show our IDs and stuff at the door. And they gave us like little tickets to get Bro, in. Bro, what a ripoff, by the way. No, I'm, I'm going to tell you the pricing after the fact. But the experience was nice. Like I'm sitting here like... We're sitting in the bus. The bus driver's nice. He's telling a lot of like, stories oh, about yeah, he's him. he's really funny. Like how he drove, you know, famous people back in the day and this, this, and that. We get in. They're checking our ID. And then once we got in, it's like glass casing, five milligram edibles if you want to try it for like 10, 20 bucks. And then they had like like samples of what the weed would look like, but it looks like it's been crystallized so it can stay there on display longer. Yeah. Like it was a jewelry it store. It was very at, high end. You know, it was nice to be in there. And we made a purchase. We spent like a hundred and twenty dollars for what would be literally worth fifty dollars if we were buying. Yeah. It. Like I was sitting here like. Well, it was like a hundred and twenty Canadian, but I think it was like eighty nine yeah. U S. And, and I, it was only like the smallest little smidgen of weed. Like it was like four, wild. It was like four <laughs> grams, like three and a half grams. And the thing is, that the, the way that they're breaking it down is like. There's the tax, like tax was like fifteen dollars, twenty dollars, like yeah. I was like a huge amount on top of like a fifty five dollars. Like, oh, so you want to go with like the fifty? I'm like, sure, yeah. And then I look in the fine print, three and a half grams for fifty five, and then the yeah. tax, and then I'm sitting here, we're like seventy, eighty dollars US. Meanwhile, we get a whole ounce here for like one twenty. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. That was that. We so that like she definitely hooked us up. Um, but one last thing on this topic before we move on to like favorite wee stories want to go back back to university i forgot to mention remember how we were talking about you know drug dealer james and how we only there for his roommates and he'll get mad at us for eating his cheese curds because you guys ate the cheese curds we, that was not me he I had no stood part of there that. with the empty you bag were so mad. No, nigga, he stood there with the empty bag of cheese girls like one of you motherfuckers is gonna tell me about my cheese and the other dude i'm not gonna say his name but he was uh he was bald uh, he was dying laughing because uh, he used to like poke fun at him because he low key only hang out with the same reason I hang yeah. out because he's the weed guy. But we can call him M. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows who that yeah. is. Yeah, M was like dying, bro. Like, yeah. cry eyes red, crying laughing because this guy was like red in the face. Like 
look good after I have the bag of it. But yeah. So the other roommate in that trio, so the, the three of them that live in the room. So we have drug dealer James. We have Wasn't M. there four of them? Oh, was there four? Yeah, because the other guy who ended up dating, um, what's her face? He wasn't from that room. Oh, he, he was from a different room. Yeah, he would only come there. Oh, because, he was just always there. But yeah, for because he, oh, him and okay, M would okay. do like a pills and we like they yeah. were yeah so okay 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 mm. I thought they were all the other, I think the other dude was just never there just... which okay let me just say this um two of those guys great uh like from the roommate situation dealer James not mm. so great their bathrooms disgusting not disgusting well because Dis- you went you went, th- you went in there to throw up though me no I went to pee oh which one did you throw up did you uh, that was on your floor oh. Yeah. Well, you, you left and came back. Yeah. And didn't tell me that you were going to throw up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, mm. I went to pee. I turned on the light. I don't think they cleaned the toilet the entire time that they were there. Why would you? Because it was disgusting. Like, I, I don't even think I peed. I looked at that toilet, and I'm pretty sure I walked across to my res and then came back. In, in, incredible. But, yeah. I think it was 420, and I had just gotten this recipe for oh, weed tea. tea. I'm talking warm brewed, like almond milk. Like it was like organic. Like the, the homie that made it for me, he's like, use this tea leaf, use this ingredient, and you will have like a four hour, five hour high because this is some potent shit. Like this uh, handmade, like he hooked me up. And I remember I sat in that tea bag, just like, guys, we're going to make a big batch. We're all going to drink it together. And Kayla was witnessing it. So it's me. Wallace M and we're playing Guitar Hero in his room, yep. jamming out, sipping wee tea, feeling the buzz, kumbaya, taking like hits of this vape. Yeah. And then I don't know what had happened. I was playing guitar or something like that, and like the positioning, it was all my fault. But I hit my wee tea, and it fell all behind poor Wallace's back, like just hot yeah. tea, just. All down the stem of the side, and he was just like, he took it from me, he's like, uh, uh, ah, and he realized about it. Yeah. And I was so sad. I was literally almost crying. I teared. Okay, looked at my Not right. Not because you hurt Wallace, but because. My wee tea. <laughs> I, I, I was sitting here just like, everybody else got to experience the high, but me because like, there's only you know, one back. You know what's sad about that? For like two days at least. I was sitting here like. That high would have been even to this day, like even how my mind is. No, like, because you got a second chance. Remember? It went bad though. Like remember, how I left it in your container for too long, and it said. Oh yeah. But and then my whole co- I had to hold, throw my whole container out because it just cancer. smelled like weed. But I was so sad because that one it was perfectly brewed because I didn't have to brew it. Like I, I yeah. the other thing was preset. Like I was trying to like remake it the same way that he said that he made it. That's how I got my own. Ver- I never got yeah. the same version from him. So that oh. one I made in my cup wasn't even like. The original version, like I was sitting there in tears, like just looking at him, looking <laughs> at my empty cup. Everyone else was laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm genuinely like just broke. Sad. Yep. That's funny. I like Izzy. Do you? Smoking at Izzy's house was fun. Yeah, it was fun. You want me to give a breakdown? Sure. I want to first start and preface this <laughs> that Izzy. Did something first before I do what I, what I did my okay. thing. So we're sitting in this room, right? Yeah. And we're getting ready to smoke. And then he's like, okay, like, are we ready to smoke? Like, let's, let's smoke up. Like, All right, let me go get the blunt ready. So he gets, gets the backwood and leaves the room. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, where did he go? And I just hear, <laughs> like, the sink water going on <laughs> and just movement. I'm like. Either he's washing his hands to prepare to roll a joint, or I, I've never seen. But why this. is he bringing the blunt with him? You know, so like well, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out the situation. Turns out, this man is washing, and he's. I know blunt smokers. You guys wet the blunt. I wet the blunt old school, eh? Yeah. He's like, like yeah. with my finger, like in my mouth, wet it, and then I unroll it, roll a good backwood. He's wetting the blunt, and I'm saying like, bro, you're brown. You're washing it. You're yeah. Washing it, but it worked out. The blunt was rolled good. Yeah. And then I proposed the question, like, hey, let me roll it. Uh, let me try to, and, like, put in a filter. And he looked at back with the filter. He's like, this is blasphemy. Why would you do this? <laughs> and I'm sitting here with, like, my, like, logic brain, like. And why? I'm sitting confused because 
I've only ever smoked with filters. Yeah, why wouldn't you smoke with? Don't you, you say it? I want to. I want to taste the weed when I'm, I'm smoking. Like, bro. I hate that. <laughs> I like just put filters. Like, you all backwards smokers in the back. Like, let's stand up. Like, be for real. You can get sticky notes, break them in half, roll them into like two filter pieces, add it in, and you have a filter. So you, when you're even smoking, have all to be sticky notes, just any paper. You smoke it all the way to the tip of the filter, and you get all the weed smoked in. You're not wasting any. And I know, like the other people, are like, oh, we unroll it, and that weed has oils and things that have been smoked in, and yeah. it's like a higher, and you can resmoke. I'm like, okay, cool. You can still smoke the same weed to the tip with the with the yeah. with the filter. So stop this whole talk of like filterless joints. Put some boat joints in your filter. And Izzy, blunts can have filters. They should have filters. Anyway. Can I say something? Yes. About filterless blunts? Yes. Talk to me. Talk to the mic. Make sure they hear you. Okay. So when you roll the filterless blunt, the, the little tip, like the part that you put in your mouth, because there is like a little gap where there is no weed, it's just, it gets a little floppy and it just... Sometimes when I look at it, it just reminds me of, like, the uncircumcised part of a penis. <laughs> so you're out here just smoking on, like, uncircumcised dick. Yeah. Like... It's like if I were to put my mouth on your dick when it's not hard. We can try that. Like, it would just be, like, like mush, like not mushy, but, like, yeah, you know, like, floppy mm-hmm. in your mouth. It's just weird. And that's why I like a filter. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's my point. That's my point. I'm so... pro-filters. I don't like getting the weed on my on my teeth, on my lips, especially if I'm wearing lip gloss and stuff. Then it's just, then it gets really like stuck, and it's just not worth it. I think we've talked about your first time smoking weed here before. Yes. I don't know if we did. I think we might have. Go ahead. What was the first time you smoked? For weed? those of you that don't know, um, I smoked for the first time in university. <gasps> <gasps> so you never like in high school like no. Would you even would you have the opportunity to if you wanted to? Nobody really had, like, hmm. that wasn't really around. Interesting. Yeah. Like, maybe it was, and I just wasn't part of, like, the secret crew that went out to do it. Mm. But, like, I don't, I personally don't really remember anybody smoking at parties. It was usually only just drinking. Um. So, yeah, so my first time smoking was after the university semi-formal. I left early because I was dating this other guy Ah. and I really didn't want to. Mm. And he was like, I was actively trying to avoid him the entire time we were there. And then it got closer to the end of the night and he was trying to find me and he was trying to like, like, do you want to dance or whatever? Mm. I'm like, I really... (laughs) Out. so I, talk to him, talk to him. I told him like yeah like my feet are kind of hurting so like let's just go like it's not that fun blah blah, blah whatever so we left early and uh we came back and we went uh into like your room because that's where you and all the other nigerians and everybody mm-hmm. was hanging out and i don't know you guys because i had been hanging out with you guys for a little bit at that point and i always see you like all smoking and like going around and like having so much fun and like I, I want to try it like what's oh. it like and especially because um one of the guys they um they would do these things called cupcakes is that what you guys Hamburg- called it, it was, uh, it was, no uh, I think he called them cupcakes was it cupcakes because yeah put icing on top yeah yeah go, it so down. it would be like weed and then like so in the the bowl piece of the bong right they would put like a little bit of weed and then they would sprinkle a little bit of tobacco and then a little bit weed on top and like all the guys they're like oh yeah like you can't handle it blah blah yeah, blah whatever. Get- like uh it takes me like two three uh times to like clear it and whatever and like they're making it seem so difficult it is and it, so it, i'm looking cough. motherfuckers would be sitting there coughing their lives away and if you don't know me i am love a competition Jesus. i turn a lot of things into okay i like competitions when i feel like there's a very good chance of me winning if there isn't a very good chance of me winning i'm just not even gonna partake because i'd rather not partake than lose you know mm. so i was looking at them and i'm like it can't be that hard <laughs> it's you listen to what it was like i don't know if i make sure they, they hear what you said 
weed, tobacco, weed on top. Like, this is not for the faint of heart. You're yeah. doing a pseudo popper. Yeah. It's not worse. So, I looked the one guy in the eyes and I said, Make me one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that because this was my room. I'm sitting there like, what you mean? Because you were in your dress and everything. And I yeah, like I still have my hair done. My nail. Like, like what is I this? came in in heels. I had taken them off at that point. But like I had come in like on 10. <laughs> and I was just looking at him like, I want to do one of those. And like everyone kind of like was like are you sure and like what have you smoked before it's like nope and i'm like no this is my first time how, teach me how to do it <laughs> and Eno got the pleasure he he came up to me it was the most gentlemanly thing and he still does it for me to this day i don't really smoke bongs anymore but he i know he would still do it he holds the bong for me and he lights it for me. So all I have to do is just, like, I like to hold on to the top piece and then just put my mouth on it, inhale, and, and whatever, right? But he does all the lighting and all the holding and everything. And so I sat there and I cleared the whole thing. And then I, I blowed out the smoke through the window. And that was it. The room just, like, stood still. Like, I was sitting here just like... <laughs> Where is it? Like, where's what? The, the, yeah. The, the, that beating heart. Either you didn't do it. And you, we saw the smoke. So something happened. And so, I just looked at them and I'm like, my parents have smoked tobacco my whole lives. Like, I, I was sitting there <laughs> flabbergasted. Just sitting there just looking at it. Just, well, like, damn. I so, grew up around tobacco cigarettes. That smoke. was... Yeah, like I said, the room literally stood still. Like, there was at least, like, we are eight, nine men dead deep in, like, a small, like, yeah. little, like, two-room, two-person, like, dormitory. Like, it was packed in there. And, yeah, she was, she was the main character. Goddamn. Yeah. I think, I'm trying to remember my first time smoking. It wasn't really, like, eventful. No? It was really just going over to somebody's house. How old were you? Mm. 14, 15? Older? 16. 16. Yeah. Oh. It was uh, after my best friend died. Ah. So yeah. that that 420, because this is actually like, you know, weird that this is like the time frame. Cause it's like walking back in like the path of Jesus, you know, like, <laughs> okay. of, of, like, you know, a situation, right? Yeah. So the time frame was like three weeks, maybe two weeks after he had happened. It was 420. Yeah. Actually, no, it was three weeks, because 4 to April. Yeah, it was three weeks after, because whatever. Yeah. Um, And I don't want to talk about it. Now, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to bring it up. It's like, yeah. Um, I just decided, fuck it, was like the only way to put it. So, That's fair. Um, I went over to a homie's house. I heard he was doing it, and it was through an apple. Oh, an apple bong. And apple at first, I didn't feel it. <laughs> So I didn't think I did it right. Yeah. And then I felt it. <laughs> Bro, let me just, long story short, because again, I don't want to get too deep into it, because a lot of things that happened in between, but long story short. Yeah. Uh, I had felt like the washing machine was talking to me. Oh. And so uh -huh. I took off all of my clothes, except for my boxers, and I put them in the washing machine. And I'm still around three or four of my friends. Yeah, at basement. not your house. At not my house. <laughs> not my dryer. My clothes, but not my dryer. But I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and just put all my clothes in it. This is my first time smoking weed. And everybody's just like, there's this one like communal moment. Where it's like, wait, put your clothes back on. Like, just angry. I was like, what? The oh, right. Yeah, sorry. I've been, sorry, the washing machine was... Was, was, he wanted to have my clothes, so I, I was the, just I obliging. Don't know, and I can have multiple people like you know confirm this the story. That's like, it's, wild. So yeah, uh, <laughs> that was my first time smoking weed. My first I time. remember. I don't think it was the first. It was within like the first couple times mm -hmm. I smoked weed, but I remember going back to my dorm afterwards, and I'm like, okay, what what sort of things do like 
high people do. Oh my god. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, because I, I gotta do something. Like, I've smoked weed, I, I'm high, I, I gotta do high people things. <laughs> and so me and Emily decided, we're like, people always talk about coming up with amazing yeah, food combinations yep. when they're high. Let's see what we got and try it. So we took literally everything that we had in our little dorm kitchen, which wasn't much. It was mostly condiments. <laughs> and we tried different variations and different combinations of things. And we did not stumble upon anything amazing. Um, I truthfully couldn't even tell you what we combined. I remember we had like, like we had like Nutella and peanut yeah. butter yeah, and, and like, jam and mostly breakfast food so like it probably all went together decently well but like nothing worth what writing about, home what about, about. The pie? oh yeah one time i also ate like half a pie and watched a movie that was intense like you, i remember you telling me like god damn like yeah because pie is not like like a like a marathon food. You have like one slice of pie or two slices of pie that you move out. Like, oh, yeah. Like, no, it year. was a lemon meringue pie because I had just gone grocery shopping that morning. And so I, would, I was stacked up on my snacks. <laughs> and I had bought a pie because they were on sale and, and it I'm looked yummy. And I'm an adult. <laughs> and I'm an adult who's going to tell me not to. So I <laughs> bought a pie. And then uh, I came over to your room and we were smoking and hanging out. And then when I went back, I think I was watching Halloween Town. Yep. <laughs> uh, just, trying, just trying to feel something, huh? Or, or maybe Step Brothers. I can't remember. Because there was also a period of time in university where I'm like, now that I'm moved out, I can watch all nobody can tell me what You're I can and fresh, cannot watch. Freshly, like, you're not watching Family <laughs> I watched enough. American Pie for the first time. <laughs> like, I'm... Just going through all of, like the, the movies that you're not allowed to go through. Yeah. So I just watched a movie and ate half a lemon meringue pie. Had the time of my life. Yeah. Well, I want to end end this with our last segment of just giving the people <sighs> an image of what it was like smoking in Toronto. With oh. us. And I want to go through different parts of it because we yeah. smoked in Toronto multiple times, right? So what I personally enjoyed was our hotel dates that we'd have in Toronto. Yeah. Where we'd find like places to smoke in the hotel area without seeming conspicuous. Just like... That's why, I, like, smoking like that, it's like, we'd only smoke maybe twice in the entire night, but every time we smoke, it's like, okay, let's go smoke. Like, we're going to yeah, go smoke. Yeah, it, ad- it was an adventure, so because, can, yep. to preface, me and Eno met in university, so once university was over, we lived three hours away from each other. So, because he wasn't, he was not allowed to stay over at my house, um... And I was allowed to go over, like, obviously he could come over to my house, but, like, he couldn't spend the night. And I wasn't allowed to spend the night at his house. So I would rent hotel rooms in Toronto because that's not quite halfway in between, but it is good enough. Yeah, it's a nice middle point. And because, like, Toronto's big city, like, we could make it into, like, dates. We could go on adventures. We could do whatever, Mm. right? So we would rent hotels and then we would be there for like the weekend together but then because we're in hotels smoking is not so accessible (laughs) and this was like still maybe what like two three years before we was legalized in canada this was like before this is 2014 2015 yeah well 2016 Ah, 2015 2016 so yeah we was only legalized like in 2019 so yeah yeah Mm. So we had to go, there was one time I remember when we were just walking around and, you know, it's like, okay, uh, I want to roll up and then we can like smoke while we're walking. Mm. And I'm like, okay, oh, we're yeah. already walking. Where, so where are you going to gonna roll? Oh yeah, yeah. And so we go into the subway and, you know, ask the, the people if they have a bathroom that he could use. And they're like, yeah, but it's for paying customers only. Okay, I'll buy a fucking drink. So I had to stand in line, and I think I bought, yeah, a drink, a drink and a bag of chips, I think. And then you were in there for what felt like forever. I was in there for like 25 minutes. Because this was like the teeniest, tiniest subway I've ever been in. And it was literally just me and the guy working. 
and there was nowhere to sit down. So I was just kind of standing against the wall and he was looking at me and I was looking at him and I'm like, I don't know, he's using the bathroom. I'm like, taking a shit. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sitting in there like just like, okay. and I, this is when I had to do like, this is before I knew how to roll properly. So I first have to get the pen and then wrap the pen around the brilliant paper to make the casing. So I lick it and close it and I'm just like stuffing it slowly, <laughs> stuffing it slowly. <laughs> Scraping it and something so And you didn't even bring a grinder, so you had to use a card and like uh, chop it up. It was like so rough. Bro, the thing now I think back to the ways that we used to smoke, bless us, that we're so much like more efficient now with it. But before, yeah. like I said, you have to sit there chopping up with a credit card to like mash it up and then I'm trying to not lose any weed here and then I'm stuffing it in this tiny little like rolling paper and like I have nothing to like push it down so I'm trying to like shake it in and shit like that and it's not like fully filled but god damn it when we got that <laughs> joint I like came a look yeah marijuana and then I think that was the day that we went to the food truck festival yep, too that's so what we made went it hit and we ate even harder oh uh, it was a great time yep. and then like I said all the other hotel things like it would be like midnight or like close to the end of the night and we got to go out at night and smoke yeah um, and we would just like walk the block because it wasn't like that big of a of a distance. Yep. And then there was one time where we were just kind of like, like we didn't have anything planned, and we didn't really want to do like a whole like we didn't have like a whole lot of money. So I I looked at Eno and I'm like, I've got a bunch of like points, points. saved up at yep. the movie theater. We could go and see some movies. And he's like, what do you mean some movies? And I'm like, I have enough points here for six movie tickets. So that means we can watch three movies together. I was, it was insanity. And we watched three movies together. I remember Baby Boss. We watched the um, live action Beauty and the Beast. And we watched Sausage Party. Yeah, and Sausage Party was was one of those ones I was like, bro, I cannot believe what I'm seeing right now. Like, that, especially the ending scene, but everywhere in between, we'd walk to the alleyway. Like, finding a space to smoke was just like, all right, like, yeah. so, like, top secret because you look to your left, look to your right, all right, okay, okay. Walking down the streets, that person looks like a cop. Is that a cop? No, it's not Yeah, because there was a lot of cops in the downtown area. So, so we had to go into the alleyways, and the alleyways had, like, all these, like, used needles and stuff all over the ground. Like, it was gross. But we and would... We would watch a movie, and then in the break between that movie and the next movie, Talk we, about would the go, movie. we would go downstairs, smoke in the alleyway, come back up, maybe re-up on our drinks or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we were watching movies all day. And that's the same day that you grabbed me and pulled me away from when I was talking to that homeless lady. When she was yeah, because what are you talking to homeless people for? All they want is money. I was going to say, like, I'm, still, I'm having conversations, and she's giving me her story. I'm like, how she got to where she was, and I'm like, oh, I can empathize with that. Yeah. Because but, you're kind of a sucker. I'm not. Wow! <laughs> what do you mean I'm a sucker? That guy, I thought he was a rapper. He said it was, it was going to be for free. He signed his name on it and gave me a CD. He's like, here you go. This, this is for but you. But see, like, why are you giving these people any sort of time of day? What do you owe it to them? To be, I don't know. Like, well, the, the, they're, they're putting the... <laughs> I don't know. They, it's, they're... Like, anybody people, that comes up to you randomly on the streets, they want something from you. Yeah. So, so if they have a good enough reason, maybe I can be persuaded. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, smoking in Toronto, it was definitely, like, an aesthetic. Because back yeah. then, like, it was the, the city for all of us. So, like, we're taking Snapchats. You know, we're showing. Yeah. Like, it was a whole... Like, and because we were new you know, into our relationship still, like so we're doing all the dating. so we were we wanted to post it for everybody. Like, look at us, we're so in love in Toronto. Like, oh, fuck, <laughs> fuck me, man, fuck me. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, this has been a fun 420. I'm fried, bro. Are I'm, you? I'm horny though. I could keep smoking. What? 420 blazes. We'll, we'll smoke after. Oh, okay. Can but we yeah. smoke again after the podcast? After we after we end yeah. the podcast, okay, cool, 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 cool. But for those of you guys smoking at home, you're not done. This is still a 420 marathon, and we expect to see you in the post credits here. Yeah, still smoking with us because again, we are live streaming all the time. Can't yes. give our socials where are we at where where are we at right now, and where will we be? Currently, we are live streaming the podcast on Twitch at the Crazy Gates. 
and everywhere else on all other social media platforms that's twitter instagram um tiktok and youtube it is crazy gates podcast that's crazy the letter g the number eight s podcast on all social media thank you again happy 420 happy 420 and but wait wait wait, wait. what does it say happy 420 blaze it or what's, what's the thing yeah for 420 blaze it mm-hmm. <laughs> 420 69 <laughs> Not 420, 69. come on come on Come on, come on.